All right, what is up, Utah fans? This is Joseph back with the Utah Utes Football Digest and a rough game for Utah today. Uh, final score just coming down to it, like 42 to 18. Arizona just destroyed Utah. It was a rough go, guys. Not a fun game to watch out the get go. Uh, it was 14 to zero with eight minutes and 32 seconds left in the first quarter. It just the game got taken away from us so quickly. Uh, there was the the touchdown. Arizona comes out, they score right away, um, and then Utah just comes out on offense. They the punt gets blocked and then returned for a touchdown. Just it felt like a kick in the groin right out the gate. 14-0. A couple things to talk about though. We were short staffed today, right? Jonah Ellis was out. Uh, Karine Reed was out, and so was Cole Bishop. You got to imagine that they're going to be out for the rest of the season. Three of our best defensive players. I heard some people say that it could be because of minor injuries. I think it's pretty clear, in my opinion, that that's not the case. Uh, they're probably going to the NFL draft almost. I mean, I'd almost guarantee that's the case. But, you know, is what it is. We'll see what happens there. So, But if I were you guys, as we move forward, I would expect that whoever was playing today is probably on this team heading into next year, maybe. And then whoever wasn't is almost a guarantee that they're not going to be playing for this team next year. I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah, the game got ugly really quick. It was 28 to zero, not too long after that. 14 minutes and 53 seconds left in the second quarter. It was 28 to zero. It was, it was just ugly, guys. It was a bloodbath early on. They were just beating the crap out of us. We, we slowly started to get our wits about us. So our defense did start to step up. Uh, outside of that, they didn't really score any more points till deep, deep into the game, right? You look, uh, the next touchdown for Arizona uh, was in the fourth quarter with seven minutes and 57 seconds left. We were starting to pull back into the game and make it a game again. It never actually happened, but it did we did make it respectable before it was over, but then they pulled away again. Just, I mean, there's not a ton of bright spots about this game. It, it, it was just a rough go. Like, like I said, there were some, there were some bright spots. Some of our inexperienced guys and our younger guys got to get a lot of playing time today and get out there, you know, in a real football game that mattered for, especially for Arizona. They're, they're still well within the mix. <clears throat> So it, it, they got to go out there and face a really good Arizona team, especially on defense. We got to get some of these guys some real reps and get them out there. And, you know, there were some struggles, too, like uh, uh, Justin Medlock had the late hit. I also saw, uh, what's his name, Jonathan Hall had uh, a few rough plays out the gate. I mean, and this isn't to make those guys feel bad. It's more of a compliment to say by the end of the game, they did start to step up and look pretty damn good. They looked a little more polished and a little more put together. And, and I think our defense looked good by the end of the game. I know there was some late late scoring in the game, but I'm going to chalk that up to garbage time for both teams. Uh, so is what it is there. I also think we saw uh, a weird game for Bryson Barnes. 31 for 53, 320 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. Um, weird game for him, like I said. Uh he had times where he was driving this offense and driving the ball down the field better than I've ever seen him do. I think you guys watching would probably agree with that. But he also had these terrible interceptions. I mean, they were not they were not like contested and thrown a little off. They were double covered a couple times. One was double covered, the first one. And the second one, I think, was double cover, but it was definitely just right to the defender. I mean, it was like there was no chance Mikey Matthews was coming down with that catch. So he had some highlights. He had some lowlights. I also think we're we're I think we're seeing where Bryson Barnes ceiling is. I, I've heard a lot of people say it and, and there is processing problems, right? There is problems processing a defense and finding where to go with the ball. And this isn't me insulting Bryson Barnes. I'm just being honest about it. I think we saw where his ceiling is over these past few games. And I think Bryson Barnes can be a very serviceable backup for this Utah team. 
and I, I hope he's back next year or he can be, you know, a decent uh, G5 quarterback or even a low end, uh, low end uh, P5 quarterback and, and maybe get a starting job there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about all that, but it is what it is. I just think we saw a decent game from Bryson Barnes, uh, some really bad mistakes, but overall, I just thought he impressed me more than he disappointed me. It's it's tough to say, hey, walk on QB that has had a real up and down year, go win us this game, which is basically what we had to do from the beginning of the second quarter on. So you can't really blame him that much. You got to blame how this game came out. And a lot of that's just, I don't even know if there's one specific person to blame. It's just the game got away from us. It is what it is. Um, a couple other guys I really would like to shout out Devon Vele, nine catches, 111 yards and a touchdown. Munir McLean, six catches, 70 yards and a touchdown. Landon King, four catches for 63. Money Parks, four catches for 30. JJ, three catches for 24. A lot of good offensive performances as this game went going. And to be clear, some of these were in garbage time, but especially for Vele, it was not. Vele, Almost all his yards were when the game still mattered. I thought when it actually not just stats, when it comes to impact on the game, Vele had an awesome game. Really, really impressed me. Uh, so good for him, dude. And I really hope he's back next year to help help Cam Rising out. Because I feel like it kind of sucks. It feels like it happens every year where, where Vele has a great end of the year. Um, and then the beginning of the following year is just a little – irrelevant for a few games i'm not saying he's irrelevant but it's like where is he in those first few games uh so rough go there i think uh i think the story of this game guys is the game got away from us early and it was really tough to get back into it that's not a style of football that we love to play right that's not a style of football that our team can do well our defense has had the game put on their backs week in and week out. And this was a game where that just could not happen. The way it started out, the opt outs on defense, it just, it was not a thing that we were going to be able to do. So I think by the end of the game though, I, our defense looked pretty serviceable overall. And it has me optimistic for next year and for next week, right? We still have this Colorado game. Our, our ceiling for our season has changed. Our ceiling was nine and three heading into this game. Uh, back to back losses. It's a tough go. Um, but we have a chance to go eight and four if we beat Colorado, and that's regular season eight and four. And then, you know, hopefully make a decent bowl game. So, is what it is there, guys. Uh, you know, we're not going anywhere on this channel. Uh, please like the video, that'll help get it out to more Utah fans. Also, comment down below. Anyone I forgot to mention that had a good game? Oh, maybe some defensive guys. Uh, let me see real quick. Let's uh, let me pull up the ESPN stats. I, I'll say before I've even pulled it up, uh, Connor O'Toole seemed to have a good game from what I saw. Yeah, so O'Toole here, he had a sack and 1.5 tackles for loss and six total tackles. Ben Fillinger, another guy that stepped up. Oh, Zamaya Vaughn, dude. He had that one nasty TFL early in the game where he wrecked that guy's day. And there were some uh, struggles early on um, for, for this team. And, and Vaughn struggled at times against McMillan, but I thought almost every time he was in position, McMillan was just a really good player. I loved these three, actually. I think this works out pretty perfectly. I thought Connor O'Toole, Van Fillinger, and Zamaya Vaughn all kind of stepped up and showed that they're leaders on this team, especially heading into next year. These look like some of the clear leaders on this team, and I think that'll be awesome to see going into next year, how these guys step up and get the job done. And, and I think the team rallied around them before it was all said and done. So outside of that, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Please smash that like button. Also comment down below. If I forgot to mention anyone, I'd love for you guys to drop it in there uh, and subscribe to the channel. We put out a ton of Utah Utes football content. That's what this channel is all about. Um, and share the video with a friend. If you have a friend that you think would appreciate this, you know, Maybe help them get off the ledge a little. Just joking. Hopefully, they're not actually on the ledge. If so, don't show them this video. You know, get them a phone number or call the police or something. Not dark humor. I don't know what I'm doing out here. 
Um, but, <laughs> but share the video with a friend, guys. I'm out of here. Go Utes.